Yes, this is a for real. It's nice to actually see smiling faces and um, be in the presence of wonderful artists. And you know what? I love this prayer. But to accept and enjoy the diversities that each of us bring to our organization. I mean, you might be an oil painter, you might be a watercolor, you might be a sculptor, you might do clay, you might do, um, you might be a printmaker, you might do stained glass. I mean, I, so many people in this organization are so varied, and it's wonderful that mm -hmm. you are uh, that you're here together. So uh, I appreciate being asked. Um, <coughs> old friends. Some of us go back. Uh, we don't even want to know how many years we go back. Over 20. Over 20. And, and Alan and Peggy. And, and it's just nice to see you all. Betsy, all of y'all is great. Um, so like, first of all, let's take a little, little uh, survey. How many of you felt like you were very productive as an artist during the pandemic? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. Well, I can't be idle. I got to do something. You got to do something. I don't watch TV. So I'm I, 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 you know what? And I pulled all the weeds and all my flower beds, and guess what? They're this high again. So mm -hmm. the great thing about being an artist is you do have something to show for it. You hope. Uh, I know so many of my friends said, "Well, I just couldn't do a thing. I was just paralyzed." And then some of my friends were like. Oh my gosh, I went to my studio every single day and had to, had mm -hmm. to put paint on a piece of paper. <coughs> so uh, if you were one of those people that were paralyzed during the pandemic, you have absolutely no excuse now. <laughs> you need to be out there putting paint on a piece of paper. Yeah. If you are, uh, are on a canvas, if you are a, one of those people who did a lot of artwork, you need to look at that artwork and assess what's next. Where do you go next? What's your next step for becoming that growing artist that it talks about in here, how to develop and grow your talent. So let me tell you kind of what I've been doing and share with you some of the things. First of all, I want you to be excited about my new palette. Um, here's one of the things I did do. Look how pretty this is. Beautiful. You can actually see all the names of the colors. That way when I'm when I'm uh, when I'm painting for folks and they say what color is that? I don't just say blue. I can uh -huh. say oh that's cobalt turquoise or whatever. Uh -huh. So I did get that done. So I wanted you to be impressed about that. Oh, I did get yeah. to travel some uh, while I was uh, this summer when I felt like I was it was safe enough to go out and do that. And so uh, I actually went to the Amazon got to go to South oh, America. Yes, I'd never wow. been to South America, didn't know much about it, but it was an amazing trip. Uh, I did, uh, I was able to, to haul my fat butt up to Machu Picchu, uh, and it was, there it was. I was standing in a National Geographic calendar when I got into the top. I couldn't breathe, but I did get up there, it was great. Uh, so I've been doing a series of paintings based upon that trip, and so I'm gonna share with you those things as I do a, a demo for you. But I always am looking for new things. And one of the things I came up with, art materials are going up and up and up. Oh, Have yeah. you noticed that? Oh my gosh, they've just gone through the Everything. blue. Everything's going up. Everything. Everything's going up. But art materials particularly. And I still work with a lot of public school teachers, so I know that they're pulling that money out of their pocket. Uh, and so I'm always looking for something that will help them um, stretch their dollars even further. And I came up with this harebrained idea. I was going through my art supplies and I had a whole box of um, colored Sharpie markers. Okay, just colored Sharpie markers. And I picked it up and looked at it and said, you know, permanent color. And I thought, hey, these are, you know, I, I'm going to throw these away because they're just about dried out. Please so don't. I did not. <laughs> What I did was I took the pair of pliers, I took the, the barrel apart, I pulled out the uh, stick, which is just a piece of felt mm -hmm. encased in some plastic, <coughs> pulled out the tip, and I started making ink mm -hmm. color. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I thought it's permanent color. Mm -hmm. Let's try this. So I've, I've started doing a whole series of paintings. 
which these are the underpaintings mm -hmm. with these colors. So I'm just putting them in a, in a container and spraying them. So let me show you a couple of well, I brought three paintings in the series. Did you use alcohol with them? No, water. Just water? Plain old water. Mm -hmm. Alcohol will take <clears throat> the permanent away. Right, so I thought I'm just going to use water. First of all, because when you, let's be honest, I was in the classroom a long time, the children are going to spray each other. Let's yeah. be honest. And so I didn't want anybody to get, you know, alcohol in there uh, or drink it for that matter. Yeah. You don't know about kids like that. So these are some of the paintings from the oh, Amazon wow. that are done using this technique. Mm -hmm. This tribal chief, uh, we spent a whole day with him in, back in the in Amazon jungles. Mm -hmm. He and his whole family and his whole tribe and um, we got to learn how to use a blow a blow gun, and we learned how to. Uh, there was a, a family with a small child in their arms, and they were picking this fruit off a tree and breaking that fruit open, and they smear it on their faces for it's a form of welcome. And so this little baby, just probably you know toddler, two year old, put this on my nose and my face, and it's so cool. But. Um, he was, a, he was a very elegant man. <clears throat> so this is all done with that underpainting. So I'll show you how to do that. This, <clears throat> oh, and they were carrying around sloths, baby oh, sloths. Oh <laughs> so this one, um, this young man, you could see with the, and guess what that tree was? It was a, um, starts with a P. Pomegranate? No, it wasn't a pomegranate. It Pine? was persimmon. persimmon? Nope. We're close. We're paprika. It was a paprika tree, and then they actually grind that down and they yeah. actually dry it, and that's what they make paprika. With. So I was so excited to learn that. So this one has a lot of color and underpainting, and this this uh, I did a, a time lapse of this painting, mm -hmm. and so it's on my um, Facebook page, so you can see how I did this and how it trans transcribed as we went. It's but beautiful. lots of color. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. beautiful. And then as we went down the Amazon, we went back into the jungle and through these estuaries and we came upon an entire um y'all are the first ones to see this. This one just is just oh, finished. Man. These are the giant lily pads that are ten feet mm -hmm. in diameter. What? These are lily pads and they you can they're as big as this table. You could lay on them. They are amazing. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a painting that I just I just finished a couple yeah. weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm entering in the Watercolor Art Society membership mm -hmm. show. So but all these are done with the sprays as underpainting. So that's what we're gonna do today. Okay. Uh, and then from the Amazon, I mean I got to uh, I got to catch a uh, Piranha. We ate piranha. It was kind of cool. And so now, um, then we went on up to Machu Picchu. But these uh, are some of the reference photos that we made as we went higher in elevation. So a lot of alpaca, a lot of llamas. And so I'm going to be working from these. Uh, this is a painting that I started. I want to show you putting a couple of different can y'all see that or is it too shiny? Uh -huh. A couple of different drawings together and then coming up with an idea of what I wanted this painting to be like. I wanted to combine multiple reference photos. I want a contrast of light and dark versus dark. I want to simplify the background. I want interesting negative space and I want rich color. So then I came over here and started in with some color choices. Uh, it does, those, those don't have to be brown and gray and, uh, you know, white. They can be any color that we want them to be. So that's the excitement. Now is that, that with that, that's not with that spray. Though, yep. Is it? Yep. How do you spray around that post? Oh, I, I actually took um, blue tape and just taped it okay. off. Okay. Just taped it off. But yeah. You were thinking I was pretty smart. Huh? Uh, you know, you did, a, you did that when I took classes from you in Viking. Yeah, but not when not we masked that. off. No, mm -hmm. Yeah, when we masked yeah. off. Okay, so I did a, I did a drawing for you. Are you all seeing this okay? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so this is our this is our fella here. And we know that the focal point is going to be right here. This is kind of an L-shaped composition. Haven't quite decided what's going to be in the background, but it will certainly not be as important as, as this character will be. Isn't he fun? So that's what we're going to do here. No, no, they were very well behaved. They were very, very well behaved. So uh, he's going to be predominantly cool. And what I did was some colors here, um, some opera with cerulean, make some really beautiful purple right there, some cobalt magenta. We'll use some of that. We'll use some cerulean, and we'll put some things together. But there is a lot of yellow. Can you all see that yellow in his, in his little face? So we're going to start with the lightest color, which is sort of a yellow color. And we're just going to do a little spraying. You wet your paper. Folder. I'm going to wet some of this right here. What, what are you painting on? What kind of paper? I'm on 140 pound uh, Arches uh, cold press. Cold press. You don't notice how much that's gone up? Good grief. I know, it's a good thing I stocked up for a while. So I'm going to wet some of this, and we're going to spray a bit. A lot of yellow down in here as it comes all the way down. Can you all see that? Well, that distributes your colors quickly. I'm almost finished. I know. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> does it dry through the color? It pretty much does. And what I brought for you, I started, this is the first time I ever sprayed any of this, and I just wet this piece of paper, and I bet I did this six months ago. Gee. I lied. Well, let's see. Today, this is almost October. Six months, uh, 412, and it's just as bright now. And this is what happens when you put salt on. Oh, wow. You still get really nice salt with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I wanted you to see how yeah. how vibrant that is. Um, so these are all made with different kinds of colors. I mean, different, you know, markers like a blue marker. Sometimes I mix it with a, <coughs> a turquoise. Sometimes. Um, like this is a nice green. I mean, it's it's. You're thinking, well, Charles kind of lost it. Look at that color. <laughs> but look at that turquoise you're going to get here. Uh -huh. Now, is it okay to get over here? And absolutely. And do I get a nice texture? Yeah, I do. Let's see, I kind of like that turquoise a little bit. But I think I've got one over here. Hang on. That's purple. Sometimes these these spray a little bit. I don't know exactly if I haven't used them in a while. So you can see the colors I'm using. Okay, I like this. That worked out pretty nice. So now while that's happening, I don't know why that straight line got there, but we'll see what we can do with it. And then I don't have to wait. I can go straight in here and start painting. I use a variety of pigments. Some of these are Winsor Newton. Some of them are um, Cheap Joe's. Some of them are um, I'm trying to think. There might be some Grumbacher. Oh, Daniel Smith. There's a couple of Daniel Smith colors in here. Uh, I try to paint pretty transparently. This whole side is in shadow, but it was underneath kind of a uh, an open air uh, color. Yeah, it was kind of underneath underneath a a nice. 
covering so it wasn't a problem. Now you know I don't have to I don't have to be beholden to this shape. That's a little opera right there, which needs to be cleaned out. It's not real clean opera. But I'm not so worried about what's happening over here. I mean, yes, I want, you can see already it's starting to get dry enough that it's holding a shape right there. Are you seeing that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm already starting in with some texture. I like new gamboge. It makes a nice uh, yellow, the bounce light underneath that chin. You know what? We really could do a timed exposure on this. It feels like being a camera person today. Maybe. Maybe you want to come do this? Alan, Alan's a sure. photographer. There's the pro right there in front of you. Debbie's a professional. Have you all used this time lapse? Debbie, on your camera? I've never done time you lapse. I, okay, I'm going to show you this. I don't have has, an eye you anything. have an iPhone? Who has an iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have an iPhone. iPhone. Okay, so if you go over here, it'll say photo, it'll say time lapse, it'll show uh, uh, slow mo, slow motion, cinema, video, photo, portrait, panoramic. So you go over here to time lapse. Now, it goes really fast. So in other words, if Alan, if you'll just stand here kind of and hold that a little bit, and then I'll try to not paint your armpit. Okay, cool. Okay, because, it, I mean, literally you need to hold that there for probably three or four minutes before, so you can say, okay, that's my reference photo. Okay. In the meantime, I'm going to pull some of this yellow in here. Look at that beautiful bounce side. That's a little bit of lemon yellow, which I think is Windsor Newton. <laughs> a little cad. That's kind of nice. It's a little bit there. And I'm going to do the water over here. Ask any questions you want. I'm just going to paint a while. Not yet. Okay. Otherwise, if you if you move.